Just 13 years ago today, Americans feared gay marriage so much that it may have affected the outcome of the presidential election. Hi there, I'm Bruce Tedder. You're watching Today in LGBT History on Tedder Vision. Today, most Americans support gay marriage and those numbers continue to increase. So it's easy to forget that it, not very long ago, the opposite was true. People were afraid of the issue of gay marriage just cause they didn't understand it quite yet. It wasn't cool to come out of the closet a decade ago. It could quite literally get you killed in some parts of the country. I mean, even today it can get you killed in some parts of the country, but that's a different video altogether. For those of you that might not be from the US or might be too young to remember, 2004 presidential election saw President Bush re-elected for a second term. He defeated a Democrat, John Kerry. At the time we were at the height of the war on terror, we had just invaded Iraq. So national security issues just dominated the election. But there were a handful of domestic issues that were, you know, of importance. One such domestic issue was gay marriage. A year before in 2003, the Massachusetts Supreme Court legalized gay marriage in the state. And so a lot of voters were afraid that the states that they live in would have to you know, recognize these marriage licenses that were issued in, in Massachusetts. So conservative, mostly evangelical organizations, they organized efforts to amend various state constitutions to say that a marriage has to be between a man and a woman. They got the amendment on a ballot in 11 states, and in 2004, in all 11 states, it was successful. But from all available evidence, this was a purely grassroots effort. It wasn't directed by any you know, political campaign. So I come from a political science background. I'd much rather just see a table of data than to hear a lengthy description. So instead of boring you by reading off a bunch of numbers, I'll just throw a chart up here. Really, it just confirms what you'd expect. Young people are more likely to vote in favor of gay marriage than older folks. But it's older Americans that regularly vote, so that's who a politician is going to pander to. Especially if that candidate is John Kerry, doesn't have the charisma to really, you know, galvanize these young voters. So how does a politician pander to a certain demographic? It's really simple. You figure out what issues that those people care about, and then you tailor your campaign around those issues. In 2004, you had the obvious national security issues, and that was a focus on both the Democratic and the Republican campaigns. But when it came to domestic issues, gay marriage was consistently listed by the voters in exit polls as an important factor to who they voted for. Matthew Dowd, the chief strategist for the 2004 Bush re-election campaign, denied any strategic focus on social issues. And to some extent, he's right. The Republican nominee for president didn't really direct any issues of gay marriage to be made a priority, but it certainly did help him. To think anything else would just be naive. The chairman of the Ohio Republican Party at the time said that it helped most in what we refer to as a Bible Belt area of southeastern and southwestern Ohio, where we had the largest percentage increase in support for the president. And Ohio in 2004 really did kind of swing the election and it was razor thin. So without the issue of gay marriage, a lot of analysts ask if he even would have won it. You might be wondering, but Bruce, if gay marriage wasn't legal in these 11 states, it's not like anybody was actually losing rights anyway. However, while the amendments in Mississippi, Montana, and Oregon only prevented marriage, in the other eight states, it also included civil unions. At the time, the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force estimated that there were approximately 2 million people in households that would be affected by the amendments. Just as an example, state employees who received domestic partnership benefits. But for conservative groups like the Alliance for Marriage, this was only the first battle in the war. The day after election day, they called for a federal constitutional amendment outlawing gay marriage nationally. For many of the organizers of these state amendments, this was the ultimate goal. Since 2004, they've tried many times to pass a federal marriage amendment through Congress, but they've failed each time. The most recent attempt was actually in 2015, but the bill didn't even make it out of committee. But do you want to know the ironic thing about the 2004 presidential election? The Bush-Cheney ticket wasn't even very much worse on the issues of gay rights than the Democrats were. The fact of the matter is we live in a free society and, and freedom means freedom for everybody. We don't get to choose and shouldn't be able to choose and say you get to live free but you don't. And, and I think that means that 
people should be free to enter into any kind of relationship they want to enter into. It's really no one else's business in terms of uh, trying to regulate or, or prohibit. I'm not for gay marriage. I, I think marriage is a sacred institution between a man and a woman. I agree with that. I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. I believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. I believe that marriage is not just a bond, but a sacred bond between a man and a woman. I, I have been very clear on this. Uh, the, uh, I have said that I uh, am not a supporter of gay marriage. So that's really the moral of the story to me. Politicians are chicken. They're not willing to go much beyond pu public opinion, even on matters of principle. Obama wouldn't even stand up for gay marriage until the end of his first term. They're going to pander to the group that can get them the most votes. So do you want politicians to start paying attention to you? You need to make them care. You need to get politically involved, and that starts by voting next week. This is a democracy where majority usually rules, but that doesn't mean that if you don't have numbers on your side, you just give up. If gay rights activists had given up after 2004, we wouldn't have gay marriage nationally less than a decade later. In this country, you stand up on that soapbox and you have your voice heard. More importantly, you engage with people that might disagree with you. Share each of your stories and I guarantee that you'll find middle ground somewhere. Even if you don't, you'll walk away understanding each other a little better. And that's what's great about America. Hey, thanks for watching today in LGBT history. If you learned something, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this as often as possible. Come back next Monday, we'll be looking at the persecution of homosexuality in the Mexican Inquisition.